This is my very first tutorial, so I thought I'd start with something easy. This skirt. Now, the filming of this took seven hours, but that was because I was explaining what I do while I was doing it, finding camera angles and stuff like that. But the actual cutting and sewing of this skirt will take you about two or three hours, maybe a bit longer if you're ruffling by hand, but if you want to, you can just make it without the ruffle. For example, if you're new to sewing and want to get that yay I did it feeling going, or if you have a very big pattern that you don't want to cut, cut up too much, you can make it like this, without the ruffle. And if we're talking about how hard these are from one being very simple and easy and five being very hard and time consuming then this skirt is level one and this one is level two so pretty easy ruffling takes time but it's not hard and as for the fabric i suggest a print fabric because of course you can do it in a solid color even a slight print will make it more interesting because the design is so simple and you don't want too thick so it doesn't ruffle prettily but you don't want too thin because that will require a lining and that's double the work <laughs> even more the fabric i chose is a bit heavy because winter is coming at least here in finland so i wanted a nice heavy skirt for winter and this is the skirt and now i'll show you how to make it now before going to the fabric store you'll have to know how much fabric you'll need and because of that i suggest you make the pattern first and with lolita skirts i think that the width of the skirt should be around two and a half meters or yards but closer to three is my sweet spot so you can really allow that massive poof under the skirt and i'm sorry if this looks awkward i have the camera between the paper and myself but that makes the width of your skirt around three meters depending on the width of your fabric and how you're gonna use it you're probably gonna have to cut it to front and back pieces which will be one and a half meter each to measure the length of your skirt you may want to wear a lolita skirt if you have one or at least your petticoats because that will help you find your natural waistline and that is around your belly button and that's where the little skirts will sit and you want to wear petticoats because if you measure the length of your skirt against your leg then when you add petticoats it's gonna look shorter because it has more things under it so you want to wear your petticoats and if you're unsure where your waistline is, a skirt, so you can pin it to where the skirt begins. Now you want to measure with a mirror because you don't want to be bending down, that will skew the measurements. And with a skirt it's easy to watch from the mirror if you want the skirt you're making to be longer or shorter. Most brand skirts are between 50 maybe 55 centimeters and the shortest ones are 45 but my sweet spot is again longer around 60 centimeters and that is pretty much the length of this one now if you want to have a basic skirt like this with no ruffle then that's the only length measurement you'll need but because I will want to add the ruffle then you have to decide how long a ruffle you want I want my ruffle to be the length of two of these squiggly thingies <laughs> and that makes it around 17 centimeters 
Now if I want the whole skirt to be 60 centimeters and the ruffle will be 17, that leaves the base skirt to be 43 centimeters and you want to add 2 centimeters seam allowance so that makes it 45 centimeters and the ruffle will be 17 centimeters and again the 2 centimeters seam allowance and you're gonna have to get these to the double for the width of your hem because you always want to pretty much double with ruffle so it looks like a decent ruffle As for the elastic, I'm gonna be using this one. It's two centimeters wide, so I'll want the tunnel to be three centimeters so it will fit nicely in there. As for the amount of elastic you'll need, you want to put it around your waist, and depending on how snug you want the skirt to be, you can either leave it loosely or stretch it a little, but not too much, so it will still be comfortable. And you want to put them on top of each other slightly before cutting because you have to sew them on top of each other a bit and that's the elastic you'll need the tunnel for my elastic will be six centimeters but I again want to include seam allowance so that makes it eight centimeters and this is the pattern made prettier and I added inches and this will also be downloadable as a photo in the description the things you'll need for this project are the pattern, thread, elastic, fabric, lace if you want some and of course other accessories and a sewing machine I got two meters by one and a half meter of the fabric it was seven euros per meter and I got four meters of this lace that is so wide that I'm gonna cut it in half so it will be eight meters and the total price for these two was 18 euros or 23 dollars next thing you wanna do is put on something more comfortable and then lay the fabric down. If you don't have a big table then lay it on the floor and you want to make it face the right side down because next you're gonna take your pen and mark down the pieces that you'll cut out of it and then you'll cut the pieces. I ended up with two extra pieces which is always nice because I can use them to make accessories like hats, bows, hairbands and bags and you always prefer to have extra than to have too little and I also cut my lace in two but you probably don't have to do that but the next step is to take your ruffle pieces I ended up with three instead of two because my fabric was two meters wide so I have I don't have two three meter long pieces but I have three two meter long ones so if you're wondering why I have three instead of two that's why but the next step you want to do is to clean the edges with either zigzag or this machine here I'm not talking to it at the moment I'm still angry at it so I'll use the zigzag as well and after that you want to sew them together so it, ha it is a nice long one ruffle and then you want to add the lace to it because it's easier to do now than after the pieces are ruffled but if you're not sure how long you want the skirt to be you can leave the lace to be the last because then you can adjust the length still but I'm gonna add it now so first I sew the three pieces together 
And now I'm gonna put the zigzag on the edge. And as you can see, it's fraying quite badly, so you want to get the zigzag right to the edge. So it holds the phrase and as you can see these no longer get worse. So after you're done with that you can just cut this off and it won't get any worse. The next thing you want to do is add the lace to the ruffle. You want to put them both the right side down. Your lace may not have it but if it does put it the same way. And if you want you can pin this but I've done so many that I can't be bothered, it's 6 meters, so no, thank you. And you want to fold this in a little and put the lace on top and then sew it. Simple as that. The next step is to ruffle and for that you want a straight stitch, as long as you can, and a very loose stitch. You want to sew the stitch to pretty close at the edge. You don't have to fold it. And this is how it looks. After making the ruffle, the next thing you want to do is sew the back and front pieces together from one seam and one seam only. And the next thing is to sew the ruffle onto the skirt. So you take your base skirt, this will be the elastic, and you take your ruffle and you place them with the pretty sides together. And you want to have a quite short and tight stitch for this one. So it really captures all that ruffling and doesn't let it go. The edge is good to be a bit unruffled so that when you sew this side seam together then it's easier to sew. Next you want to sew the other side seams together starting from the top or where the elastic tunnel will be. And now you're, you'll be glad that you left that small thing unruffled so they are a bit easier to sew together. Make sure that they align and grab hold of the ends. Make sure that the lace aligns as well. Now if I would have been a smart person I would have left extra lace on the other end so I could have folded it so I didn't have to sew on the actual lace like I did. Let me find it. Like, like I did here where the lace ended because I had to cut it in two. So when you overlap it like this, you can't really see, especially when it's ruffled, you don't really see that the lace ends. But here I had to sew it together so it's not as pretty. But I don't think anyone's gonna notice, but that is something that you should have done. <laughs> and the next thing you wanna do is to put the tunnel for the elastic. Again, you want to make sure that if I sew here, the elastic has enough room for it and you don't want to sew the whole way around you want to leave a small hole for you to put the elastic through. For the next step you'll need two bobby pins one to secure the elastic to the fabric so that when you're 
putting it through you don't lose the other end and one to put on the end of the other elastic and then you just put it through the tunnel and start pulling it through after you've put the elastic through you wa might want to secure the elastic to the tunnel with the safety pin so you don't lose it and have to do it all over again and now that you have the ends you're going to sew them together overlapping like this and go back and forth as many times as you have the patience to so it doesn't snap while you're wearing it with as short stitch as you can and with zigzag because that holds better there again as many times as you can so it doesn't fall off or break when it stretches Cut off the excess and then you can take out the bobby pins and the next thing you want to do is close the tunnel. But you do not want to sew on top of the elastic, you want the elastic to be able to move. So, so you want to sew next to it. My tunnel stitch goes from here so I'll just continue it. Put that in there and straight stitch, normal length. And you want to make sure that the fabric isn't sheared but straight while you do this. And that's it. The skirt is done. And here are some close-ups of the skirt and of the ruffle and lace. Again, this was my very first tutorial. So if you have any positive or negative feedback, please feel free to leave it down below, as well as other requests. This is the first skirt that I made, but I plan on making ones that require a zipper, some that are only sheared in the back and other types because there are so many kinds of skirts and I love skirts so I'll be making those and I'll do accessories from the leftover fabric that I had from this project I'll show some simple JSKs and stuff like that I hope you like this video and I'll see you again next time! Bye!